Hey, this is just a short video to show a little bit more detail on the Beerhawk fuel system and the, in particular the way that I've chosen to do it. It can be done uh, any number of ways and uh, often is. There's, there's a lot of variety um, the way different builders uh, decide to assemble their fuel system. Um, Bob Barrows designed it to be gravity fed um, and using a carburetor was his intention and therefore most aircraft don't require a fuel pump. I've decided to go with uh, a fuel injected engine. I've got an IO540 and uh, therefore I will need an auxiliary fuel pump as well as the engine driven fuel pump. So um, I've installed one and that can go in uh, a variety of locations. So let's have a look. Um, okay, you, you'll see that <laughs> today I've actually dropped the aircraft right down and put it on this wooden frame, uh, which is brilliant. It's really uh, low down close to the floor and Originally, I had it uh, with much longer legs on the frame. You probably saw in an earlier video, it was standing quite high. Legs went back on it, then they came off, and now I've dropped it right down, ready for covering and ready for installing uh, instruments as well when they turn up. So I'll just uh, give you an overview. Um, as you probably saw in a previous video, uh, the uh, wing root panel is here, and we've got the aft fuel line. This is on the left-hand side and the forward fuel line. Both come down. Um, around the door and they meet up down here uh, at this T-junction. From there, the fuel lines go into the fuel selector unit and underneath here is, a, is the gas escalator. You can't see it from the top, I'll show you in a minute. But this is uh, a system that was redesigned at the factory recently and I believe this is probably the first uh, installation. So a lot of builders do put their uh, the fuel pumps in this bay back here. I've chosen to locate everything uh, in the forward footwell area. And the reason for that is it's very easy to access for maintenance, very, very easy. Um, for a start, I've actually split the uh, forward boot cowling through here. You know, obviously you can't see it in here because I just removed it about an hour ago. But I can remove this whole panel and I can also remove um, the side panels here and I can remove the, uh, the tunnel underneath very, very easily within about two minutes. So I'll just give you a, uh, a top-down view so that you can see the layout there. Um, over here is the um, park brake valve. And originally I was gonna put it on the firewall, most builders do. I found that this was really uh, out of the way down here. And ag again, it's still very easy for me to access and, and uh, work on. I'm just gonna put the camera down low and uh, you'll be able to look back up. So. The fuel lines, uh, left and right fuel lines go into the fuel selector. They exit aft into the gas escalator. You can see the quick drain that I've got on the bottom. And uh, that's uh, accessible through the, the tunnel very easily. I've put a, a hole in that so I can drain the fuel. It then comes uh, out. The, the one compromise that I did have to make was the, uh, the way that pipe is bent. The reason for that, there's not much room there with the junction of the, uh, the steel frame members. That fuel line then comes into the uh, fuel pump there, that's the electric pump, exits out here and runs into the fuel flow transducer here and then into the firewall. I've disconnected obviously because I took the firewall off. So that gives you a quick overview of how I've, how I've set the, uh, the fuel system up and uh, hopefully it'll work very, very well. Uh, there's a lot of discussion and thought has gone into this. I've got two uh, retired Air New Zealand engineers that visit regularly and I always pick their brains on it. And uh, yeah, one thing you will notice uh, perhaps is that uh, is the emission of a fuel filter. That was something we thought through long and hard. There's been a lot of discussion about it. There is actually a filter in the system in, inside the gas escalator. It's just a coarser mesh at the moment. We've discussed whether to reduce the size of that mesh at the stage we're leaving it um, as it is for um, a, a number of notable reasons. And I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the one thing with the gas escalator is you can very easily, um, through the access panel, undo the bolt in the bottom of the gas escalator, remove it, clean the mesh screen, empty any crud out of the gas escalator and put it back together and drain any water out of it. So it should be a good system uh, and it's one I, I think I'll have a lot of confidence in.